Hi, I'm Steve Duval from Thor Motor Coach and welcome to getting to know your RV. In this episode, we are gonna to get to know the Outlaw Class A gas toy hauler. So the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do before you head out is inside you have a battery disconnect switch. It's a little black switch, you turn it on, the light will illuminate red. When we go inside, we'll show you exactly where that's located, but before you head out, go ahead and turn that on. That is going to get your motor home fired up. You can use your lights, all your 12 volt systems will come on. It's also important that it's on because as you're driving down the road, your chassis battery is going to charge your house battery. When you're plugged into short power, it is going to charge your battery. So it is very important to make sure that you keep it on and leave it on. The only time you're going to want to turn that off is if you are storing your motor home for an extended period of time. Now there is still going to be a draw. Just because your switch is off does not mean you're not going to drain your batteries. In fact, you will over an extended period of time because there are little tidbits and things that store memory and little digital displays. So what you wanna do is actually physically disconnect your batteries or better yet, when we get over to show you how to plug into shore power, just plug into a regular 110 outlet you need an adapter for that, but you can do it and that way you will still keep enough charge on your batteries that they will not be dead the next time you go out to use your outlaw. We're going to start up front with the new 7.3 liter V8. It replaces the V10 on older outlaws. In order to access it, you're going to use the bullnose key. You simply push it in, turn, undo the hinges on each side. And once you have your hood up, you can see you have access to check your fluid levels in here and do routine maintenance. You also have a battery up here. Your radiator is up here, but if you ever need to check your levels down here, your windshield washer fluid, this is where you're going to do it. And again, it is the bullnose key on here. And to lock it up when you are done checking your fluids, simply close it. And then you just reverse the process, put your key in and lock it up. Also up front, you are going to have your headlights, your daytime running lights, your windshield wipers, your marker lights, and we'll show you how to turn those on. There actually is an auto feature, so you can have your headlights go on when it gets dark out inside. And when we take a look at the cockpit area, we're gonna take a look at that. So as we work our way around, one of the nice features about the mirror is it has an integrated side view camera. So when you are turning either right or left, you will see what is off to that side when you turn on the directional. Very clear, crisp display, very handy to have. You can come out here and adjust your mirrors. Now they are power heated mirrors. You can adjust the top portion from the inside and then on the outside you kind of tweak the bottom area to give you the field of view that you want. And we're going to continue working our way down the side. We'll open each and every bay until we get around to the inside. When you're getting ready to set up camp, this does have an awning. You can see we have the legs at the side and the top, and inside there's a switch, it says extend, and you have a front awning and a rear awning over the rear entry door. But you simply hold the button and you wait until the awning comes out. It is also pitch adjustable, and uh, we'll show you how to do that in a minute. You just, literally it shows you right there, you just pulled the side, so let's say that there's a little rain on top and you want to get the rain off, you just kind of pitch one side up or down, or maybe you want to use it to block the light as it comes in, but now your awning is out. There are also lights for it and you can just hit the button and there your LED light strip comes up. And this is really nice because you can actually use these lights as night lights when you're set up at camp at night and you want to go out late or come back or maybe you're going up to use uh, the pool or the facilities, whatever it may be, you can keep this light on and it really casts a nice soft glow that's not going to bother your neighbors, but it is going to give you a nice sense of security. It's a nice way to light up the outside of your coach. There are also wind sensors up here, so if it gets too windy, it's a little rough, it will automatically come in. Now it's advised that when you go out for the day, you're going to be gone for a few hours, go ahead and put your awning in and before you go to sleep at night, because you never know what the weather is going to be, you don't want to damage your awning you don't want to damage your coach, go ahead and retract that for the night. But again, there is another one in the back, but we're going to go ahead and retract this one. You simply hit the retract button and in it goes. A lot of other features to show you out here we'll get to. You can open the windows. The nice thing about these frameless windows, we'll show you how to open them inside, but they actually pitch out a little bit. So you can open them, you'll get a nice breeze coming through there, some nice ventilation. So no rain, you don't have to worry about water getting into there. So if your awning's in and your windows are open, it's just a nice crisp fall night. 
you can open those windows and get some ventilation in. Notice how the steps didn't go in? There's a little switch for that. If you want these out when you are at camp, inside there's a button that says step. You can hit that and leave them in the out position constantly, or you can hit the button, which you're going to want to do before you hit the road, so they automatically go in. Make sure that they are going in before you drive because you don't want to drive with your steps out. That would cause a lot of damage to your motor home and potentially people and other vehicles. Opening our exterior television. Yes, we have some entertainment out here. This is on a swivel, which is a very nice feature. So you can set up back here and you know the sun's going to be right up over here shortly and it's going to be glaring. So you can go ahead and turn it this way. It takes the glare off the TV. You're set up. You can go ahead and do that. Or if you would rather not watch TV right below this, let me move this out of the way so you can see it here. We have a sound bar. This is a Bluetooth sound bar really easy to hook up to just like your phone or with just like any other Bluetooth device you have at home you can use your phone and hook up and stream your favorite playlist that way. So opening our first storage bay here we got a couple of things happening we have our fresh water tank and we have our propane tank. We're going to start up here with our water tank and we'll show you how to fill that here when we get around to the port where you do that but what's really nice about this is when you are done for the season or you're done at the campground and you want to empty it. We have a nice one inch uh, valve here. You go ahead and turn that and you can go ahead and drain your tank that way. Down below, we have your propane tank. A couple of things to talk about with your propane tank. You're going to need this for your furnace and you are going to need it for your cooktop. This does have a residential refrigerator. So in order to get this used for the first time, you're going to take it to any place where they fill propane. They'll unscrew this cap, the hook up here, they'll fill it up. It's a little bleeder valve, and it is gonna take a little while to get this filled up. They have to purge the tank first. They have to get all the air out and make sure that it is filled with propane. You have a gauge down here, and this is your on and off valve. Now, a couple of things to take note of that you can keep this on while you are driving. However, you're going to have to be aware of bridges and tunnels and there are certain road restrictions and travel restrictions where you are not allowed to have your propane on. So when you're planning out your trip, go ahead and look ahead, do a little research and see if I'm going under this tunnel, do I need to have this off? So go ahead and take a look at that. Um, the other th great thing about this, and when we get to the back, we'll show you there is an exterior propane connection where you can hook up a grill or a fire pit or any other propane device that you have. So you are equipped with propane. As we move down to our next bay here, nice little storage bay here. You have some pass through. Each bay has its own light, which is very handy to have, and you control those from Rapid Camp Plus. We'll show you how to use. They are made out of rotocast. It's nice, it's durable, it's easy to wash out. In the back, you have a little drain hole, so you throw some muddy shoes in here, or maybe you're tailgating. This is an outwa. It's a perfect tailgate machine. Throw a couple bags of ice in here. All right, throw some drinks in there. You got yourself a perfect cooler. The water will drain out. Also in this bay, and this may not be the best one to throw ice in, you do have a 110 plug up top, and you do have a nice little port down below where you can run some wires through. So if you need to plug something in, you can go ahead and do that here. But again, nice large pass through. This would be great for, for skis or for fishing poles or anything of that nature. Up above, you have your exhaust for your furnace. Now you're not really gonna need to get in here, but again, it does say hot and this will get hot in the colder months when you are running your furnace. We'll show you how to operate that when you go inside. But uh, just be aware that this does get very hot and some people will take and will buy a little screen to put around there so when it is stored for the winter months that little critters don't get inside, bees and mice and whatnot. So something to think about. Oh, look what we have going on in here. We have our house batteries. There is a lot happening in here, but there are also a number of fuses in here. So let's say, oh, maybe your jacks aren't working exactly how you want them to work. I would come out here and you can check to see if these are tripped. If they are, it's real easy to do. You can just push that yellow lever right back up and reset that fuse. So your house batteries are in here. And again, if you are storing for a long period of time, you can go ahead and disconnect these, but they are also tied into 
your chassis battery, which we showed you when we opened the hood there. So they're all kind of connected together to help keep each other charged to keep you running at a very long time. As we move down the side here and open this bay, very, very large storage bay. You can throw your golf clubs in here, maybe some more ski, whatever you want. It's got a nice pass through. This is also where the ladder for your overhead bunk is stored. You have a light that you can control and you also have the brain for your slide out motors. We're gonna talk about slide outs, but if there is an issue with your slide out, it's not going in, it's not going out, maybe it got a little bit wonky, this is where you would reset it. You're gonna have one for each slide and it's really, really simple. There are a series of codes, so it will be flashing a red light and you can kind of read what's wrong with it. But all you do is press it, take a, a pen or a small Phillips screwdriver, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold it on seven and it will reset the system. Now in the event you would manually need to put the slide wall in, you can go ahead and unplug the plugs here and it will tell you exactly how to do it right here. There's also a video explaining this, but you go ahead and unplug these, it releases the motor and then you and your friends can go ahead and put in the slide room. Now on this one, it's a little bit smaller, probably get it in with two people. When it's in, you go ahead and put those right back in there. But we'll talk about troubleshooting and resyncing your motors when we get to that. Moving down to our tires. Very, very important that you maintain proper tire pressure, especially if you are towing or hauling. You're gonna to wanna to come out here and you're gonna to wanna to check your tire pressure very, very frequently before you hit the road for long trips each day. Now, there are two tires. You have an inside and an outside tire, and we do have a valve extender on here. So when you are checking your pressure, you can check the inside and the outside, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they are at the proper inflation. You don't want underinflated tires. That can cause a lot of problems. You also need to check it when they are cool. So make sure that it may be a good thing to do first thing in the morning before you hit the road. You don't wanna check them when they're hot. Uh, the other important reason why you wanna check the inside is you want, you, you don't want it underinflated and bulging out and pushing down because there is the potential the tires could rub and that could cause a, a driving hazard. So it is very important that you check your tire pressure and these are going to run quite a bit higher than your car. Your car is usually what, 35, 40, maybe 45. These run a lot higher, okay? Check it while it's cold. The information is on your tire. Also inside, there's a number of stickers we're gonna show you. Uh, that's how you find a number of different items for your gross vehicle weight. And we'll talk about that when we get around to talk about towing. But tires, very, very important. Uh, a lot of times they're overlooked. So make sure that you're checking your tire pressure regularly. Right next to your tire here, this is great for a number of reasons. It's, it's a, a, called a pet tie down link. So if you have a dog, hook the leash here and then you know that they're staying at camp. Uh, one of the things I use this for, we leave the dog generally at home, is bikes. So if you have bikes, you can go ahead and lock them up here, keep them secure throughout the evening. Um, so a nice little uh, tie down feature there. We have the entry to our garage. We're gonna give you a garage tour here shortly. Moving down to the last few items here, another storage bay here. Again, you have, this one's uh, metal. So this is a great storage bay where you can take and throw whatever you need in there. Maybe you're gonna throw a tool bag in there or whatever it may be. A littler bay back here. And the nice thing about back here is you have a release for your garage. So to unlock your garage, you can either go inside, you can uh, use the key, or you can simply press the button and it will unlock your garage. And we'll talk patio systems here in a little bit. And finally, your exterior propane connection. We showed you the propane tank. Well, this is the extension here. All you need is a cord. You can plug in your grill. You can plug in a fire pit. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, that this is a regulated feed. So if you have tube, you have a regulator on your grill and you're not getting the flow that you want, go ahead and disconnect the regulator from your grill as this is regulated. Time to move around the back. We're going to talk a little bit about towing and what you can tow behind your outlaw. So let's talk about your hitch. This is a class four hitch. You have an 8,000 pound tow rating and a 500 pound tongue wipe. So all of this adds up when we talk about towing and there are a lot of numbers you need to go over and we have a complete breakdown of towing and capacity on our YouTube channel which will link for you here. But just to kind of give you some quick basics, you have a seven pin connector here so if you want to hook up a trailer brake controller you can. You also have a four pin connector down below so you have all the connections you need two inch receiver here, but a couple of things you need to take aware of. And there are 
There are stickers inside we'll show you that have some very important information on it. One, you need to know your gross vehicle weight. Now this is gonna be the curb weight plus the cargo, the water, the propane, the passengers. This is, this is everything, okay? So your gross combined weight rating, that includes what we just talked about along with your tow vehicle, okay? Because a lot of people ask, hey, can I tow a Jeep with this? Yes, yes, you can tow a Jeep with this, but you have to take other information into account. You are gonna find that GCWR on thoroughmotorcoach.com, you're gonna find it on the specs page. You also have the occupant and cargo carrying capacity. That's the OCCC. There is a little yellow label on the door we're gonna show you. This lets you know how much weight you can actually add to your motor home. There's a gross vehicle weight rating, and this is the maximum allowable weight once you have this fully loaded that it can haul. We talked about tongue weight. That is what presses down on your hitch. So how do you find your towing capacity? Simple, you take your GCWR, your gross combined weight rating, and you subtract it from your gross gross vehicle weight. You also have to follow a couple of other uh, towing recommendations as well, but that's a quick overview of how to figure out how much to tow and we go inside again. I'll show you we're going to find all that information. So what do you say? We take a look at how to set up what this toy hauler is all about, your patio. So let's put the patio down. First thing you have to do is unlock it. We showed you how to do it from inside that last storage bay. There's a button up, you press it, or you can use the key back here, put it in, turn it, you can hear it unlock. And this is the zero G ramp door. So simply pull it down one handed, down it comes. Now there are a number of different options back here. Okay, so this is in the patio position, but let's say that you want to take and use it as a ramp. You want to load up, oh, your toys. You have some, some dirt bikes. Maybe you have a little quad. What you do is you undo the pins on each side look just like this okay so you undo your pin undo the cords now you have a nice ramp to drive up now an, uh, a little trick that you may want to do if you're going to load up motorcycles or dirt bikes to the back is take your front jacks and we'll show you how to operate your jacks put them in manual mode and raise the front end up with your jacks and that's going to take a little bit of the kink out back here at your ramp you'll be able to load your bikes right up okay so that's going to help you out so that is how you go ahead and you use this in your ramp position real easy to put back together you simply put your cables back in with the pins make sure they're secure walk around to the other side you're going to do the same thing just like that climb up and we are going to talk about your patio okay so it's got a nice patio system that's real easy to use simply pull it out you have two sides here you flip your door out same over here slide it out flip your door It'll lock into place, just like that. There are little guide pins for you. You can slide that out, and now you have a nice patio. So you can go ahead and you can throw some chairs up here or whatever it is you need. But outside, we got a couple of different things to talk about. One, you have to go through your keys so you look like a medieval dungeon master. A couple of fuel tanks back here. What's really neat about the Outlaw is this tank right here is for your exterior fuel fill. Okay, so a couple of things to take note of here. This is a separate tank. This runs on its own tank. So when you're filling up, put your gas in here. And, all right, so here's your pump. And here is your grounding wire. So what you're gonna wanna do before you start pumping is whatever you are filling up. So if it's your dirt bike, your quad, whatever, you're going to attach this to that vehicle to ground it to create so it doesn't create static electricity so there are no sparks so make sure you do that uh, to turn this pump on that is right over here in this bay there's a little operating switch you can turn it on you can hear the pump run you need that on in order to pump the fuel you just press it again to turn it off you also have a gauge back here so this is your fuel gauge for your exterior fuel fill Press it twice to stop the pump. Once to start, twice to stop. You can lock everything back up. 
And as we move down the line, this is really easy to find if you're like, well, gosh, we have so many keys. It'll tell you, 751, you pull out your 751 key and you just lock it right up. Moving on, we have a storage bay. Again, nice bay for storing whatever it is you need. Here is your main fuel fill. You're gonna open that and this is where you put your gas in. Again, it's the same key. As we move down here, shore power. So let's talk a little bit about electrical. This is going to be a 50 amp shore power cord. You're gonna have your transfer switch inside as well. And this is detachable. All right, so this is a 50 amp shore power cord. It's nice, it's big, it's beefy. And to hook up to shore power, when you are at your campground, I recommend hooking up to shore power first before you put your slides out. That way you have power going to everything. You're gonna have enough juice to put your jacks down, to put your slides out. And you're gonna wanna get into your storage bays and empty things out before you start putting out your slides on certain units so you don't hit your head. So to plug in, what you do first, plug in your cord here and it goes in, it twists, and then you go ahead and you just lock that down. What's nice about the Outlaw is you do have a hole here so you can run that cord down and through and keep it out of the way. It gives you a nice clean look. Then you take the other end, okay? So you take this over to your campground fuse box. Don't plug it in yet. Make sure all the fuses are in the off position. You turn those off. If this was your campground fuse box, you plug that in, then you turn your fuses on, then you have power. Now let's say at the campground you're at, you only have 30 amp power. You can buy an adapter for that, which will take you and allow you to plug your 50 amp cord into the 30 amp receptacle. It's just a little adapter. It's about this long. Each side's a little different. And then you'll have 30 amp power to this coach. Now you won't be able to do all the same things you would with 50. So say you're running, you know, both air conditioners in here and the microwave on a 30 amp, you might blow a fuse and we'll show you how to reset that. But you can run off of 30 amp power if that's all they have. And again, you can get an adapter that takes you from 50 down to 110 so you can plug in to your house so you can keep the batteries charged or uh, maybe keep that refrigerator going. Also in this bay is your cable TV. There's a little cable TV coax in here. So if you're at the campground and you wanna watch cable, you screw into here just like you would at home and then plug it right into the campground there and we go inside. We'll show you how to program the TV to scan for your cable channels. So this is how you hook up to your shore power. Moving on down the line, over here you have an extremely large storage bay. Nice, again, it's that nice rotocast material. Has the drain hole, you have pass through here. You can see you can access your ladder on either side. Up in here, we do have the other brain for the slide out that is right here. And something else to take note of when you pull into camp and you just come off of a long trip and you're unloading your bays as you're setting up, be aware here is your exhaust, okay? That is gonna be hot. You don't wanna get any burns, so just make sure that you are aware of that. As we move on down the line, a lot to talk about in this bay. This is your whole home filtration system and we have a lot of switches to talk about here, but we're gonna start over here and work our way over. This is your water filter. You can go ahead and take that off. You can put in a new cartridge, you can drain it. This RV has been winterized, so I will not unscrew that right now because it is full of RV antifreeze and I don't wanna leak it all over the place, but you can take and change the cartridge in here. This little black switch, this is really nice. This controls the light up top. So when you are down here at night, if you pull into camp late, which happens to us most of the time, right? Because we stop along the way, we see something else. So you're setting up at night or you have to leave early in the morning Morning, it's still dark out you can go ahead and you can turn the light on up above and it's going to give you a nice light down the side of your coach so you can see all the connections at the campground you also have an individual light right here which you can control through rapid camp plus you have your low point drain here for your water heater so if you want to drain your water heater you turn that on and you can drain that this here is your tank flush all right so after you drain your tanks we'll get through here in a minute you plug a hose into here, but not your potable water hose, okay? You wanna use a hose for this. And a lot of times if you're at a dump station in a campground that they will have that for you, or if you have an additional hose with you, you can go ahead and plug into here and then you can flush your tanks, uh, your black tank with that, but make sure your black handle is open. We'll drain our tanks here in just a second. Up here, 
we have all kinds of options going on, okay? So this is going to be for your fresh water tank. You have a couple of options. If you are filling your tank, turn it here. You plug in here, and this is where you are going to do all of your filling, all right? Your hose goes here. Make sure you're using a hose for potable water. Fill it up here. You can fill your tank here. If you are dry camping and you're not connected, you're out in the wilderness, this is an outlaw. You're probably going to do quite a bit of that. You go ahead and you turn it to dry camping. There's a little QR code here tag. Uh, you can kind of scan and go through this as well to get the full instructions. If you're hooked up to city water at your campground, simply turn it to city fixtures. And if you are winterizing or you want to sanitize your fixtures, you go ahead and you turn it over to winter, uh, winterize and sanitize. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put it on tank fill. Over here, this is for your water heater. Typically, you're gonna leave it in normal, okay? But if you want to winterize, you wanna bypass the antifreeze from your water heater, turn it over to here, uh, the bypass drain. And if you are sanitizing your fresh tank at the end of, a, end of the season, you can go ahead and turn it down here to sanitize your fresh tank. As we talk about our tanks now, Nice, you can run your sewer hose, standard three inch sewer hose up through the bottom here. This unscrews and you have your black valve and you have your gray valve and you also have your cap. Now the nice thing is, is this pipe swivels, okay? So when you're not draining your tanks, you can keep the cap on and you can keep it in the up position there. That way you don't have any leaks, but you're gonna run your sewer hose up through here and then you're gonna connect it right through here and you can see how it is grooved like that. That is what your sewer hose is gonna look like. So it's gonna securely attach right under here. You're gonna pull it down. And in order, you will first pull your black tank handle, okay? So wait till your black tank drains and it is done. Then you're going to take and you're gonna pull your gray handle. Now your black holds all of your toilet water in your sewage. Your black tank is your sewage tank. Your gray tank is gonna be your showers and your sinks. That is why you pull that one second to get the cleaner water down to rinse out anything that may still be in your sewer hose. So it goes black tank and then it goes gray tank. And then when you are done draining your tanks, tap your black handle in and then tap your gray handle in and that's all there is to it. But once you hook this up and you push this down, you're gonna run this through and you're gonna connect it to the campground or dump station fill where they have the uh, outlet there. When you are done, unconnect after your tank handles are closed you're going to unconnect it here and there there may still be there may still be a little something in that hose so when you pull it down take it and then pull it up and kind of hold it up and then walk it over to the dump there and make sure that everything is cleaned out and i would recommend that you wear gloves with this because it, it it is your sewer tank, right? So make sure that you're wearing gloves with this. Again, this is a new motor home. These tanks have never been used, um, but that is how you are draining your tanks. Now, after you have moved the hose over, it's all clean. This is where this exterior shower comes in handy. You have a hot and a cold. You can take and rinse this out. You can just sh shoot some water down there to make sure that everything is rinsed out. A lot of times campgrounds will also have uh, a water available that you can go ahead and rinse that out as well. So you have hot, cold. This is a shower is great too for uh, rinsing off dirty feet after you're done on the trail or dirty boots. You can go ahead and do that here. This here is for winterizing. When you are winterizing your motor home, you can go ahead and turn your tabs over to winterize or sanitize. You unscrew this, you put your hose in here, and then you put that into your RV antifreeze and then you will go ahead and you're gonna run that RV antifreeze through the system. Something else back here which is nice is your water pump is back here as well. So if there's a little filter on here and if you wanna change your filter, you just reach back here and you unscrew it and then you can change the filter on your water pump. But that is our wet bay. So pretty easy, pretty simple. If you follow all the steps, it's not really as bad of a job as most people think. So I'm gonna shut up here, we're gonna move down the line. A couple of things to talk about right here is our tankless hot water heater. You have a lot of information inside. If for some reason it's not working, come out here. You have an on and off switch. You also have a fuse. You can check your fuse. You can also turn it on and off here. So uh, a lot of information in here and you can download the complete owner's manual that is included to uh, take a look and see how everything works there. But really not much you need to do there. It's kind of a nice feature to have. In this bay here, we have more storage. 
a little pass through here, a couple of things going on in here. You also have your inverter. The Outlaw has an 1800 watt inverter. Just press this button to turn it on. It takes 12 volt DC power from the batteries and changes it to 120 volts AC. Now you can use items like your fridge and TVs. The inverter is going to power select outlets in the Outlaw so you can use them without being plugged into shore power or have the generator running. Take note, this does draw power from the house batteries so you need to make sure they stay charged. Let's talk about our generator. This is an Onan Quiet Gas 55 100 watt generator. This is going to give you enough juice to power everything in your motorhome. You're going to power your refrigerator, your air conditioners, your microwave. When you are out camping, go ahead and use this. It is really a great convenience to have, especially in an outlaw, because there's a number of times you're going to be off the grid. You're going to be out at a park. You're going to be towing your dirt bikes, and you're going to want to go out and hit the trails and hit the dunes. Whatever it may be, you're going to want to come back to a nice, cool coach. It's going to be hot out there. You want to come back and relax. You want to take a shower. You want to make a meal. Go ahead and run this. This runs directly off your gas tank. Now, when your gas tank reaches a quarter tank, this will shut off, but use it. It is a great feature to have. There is a maintenance schedule for this as well, and you're going to need to look at your uh, own and owner's manual that is included in your back black bag um, when you take this panel off there are a couple of switches in here here you go you can add your oil here you're going to want to check your oil level there is some service information here you're going to find all of that in your owner's manual you also have a couple of circuit breakers out here so let's say that this isn't running and you can't figure it out come out here pop the panel off you have two 30 amp breakers right here see if they're tripped you can also start and stop your generator from here but you do want to prime it first and you simply hold it down you let let it prime you light up and then you and just like that your generator is started so your generator is a great feature to have make sure you're using it and make sure you are taking care of it before we open the last bay i do want to point out this is the exhaust for your generator Make sure you are aware of that when you're over here, that that does get very hot if your generator has been running. And as we open our last bay, what you are going to find in here are the hydraulics for your one touch leveling jacks. This is the system. This is where it works if you need to do any troubleshooting. If you need to manually override your jacks and bring them up, uh, real easy to do. We have an entire video on that, but uh, you simply unscrew with the right size wrench. You kind of loosen up the valves here. You have front and back and you pop this cap off, you run it's the easiest with an electric drill, uh, and that will run your jacks up, then you tighten everything back up. Your hydraulic fluid is back here, but these are the brains for your hydraulic one-touch leveling jacks. And it is time to move around to the inside and show you all the interior features on this Outlaw Toy Hauler. As we walk in, you're gonna notice a number of switches and buttons and panels on your entry door. Some of these we showed you earlier, but I'm gonna walk through them again. We talked about your house battery and how important it is to turn it on and leave it on throughout your trip. That is gonna be right here, it says main power, and that's the red light that you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's on. I'm on the step right now. Remember we talked about leaving it out or putting it in when you open and close the door. This is the switch for that. Here are the multiplex wiring system rapid camp plus panels that you can extend and retract your awnings you can turn on the lights you also have lights for your living room and your ceiling uh, you can turn all your lights on or off from here as you enter your cargo bay lights are here as well as a little light in your step well and as i climb up there's just a little little storage under this middle step here so maybe some muddy shoes maybe a couple of tools whatever you need fits real nice here so i'm going to move to the driver's seat i'm going to show you how to put down the jacks we're going to put out the slides and we're going to get set up for camp all right so we are now at the campsite we are hooked up to power we have all of our sewage options hooked up we're ready to take and level our coach and put out the slide so in order to level your coach you need to make sure that the coach is on you need to make sure that your parking brake is set over here is a one touch leveling system you turn it on you hit auto and the jacks will automatically come down. Now, as the jacks come down, you don't want to start walking around and in and out. You want to keep the coach level. That way you get a nice level situation where you can put out your slides. You won't have any problems. You, just want, to, you don't want to sleep on an angle. Uh, you can also put your jacks down manually. You just hit manual mode. You can put the fronts down together. You can put the backs down together. You can put the left side and the right side down together. So you have a lot of options here. Now, a couple of things when you do put your jacks down. 
make sure that your wheels are not off the ground. Okay, after they're down, you wanna make sure that your wheels are all touching the ground. Sometimes you'll see the tires like this. You don't want that. That's really not uh, a good situation. So make sure that all your tires are on the ground after you level your coach. Also, some campgrounds require you have jack pads. So you're gonna to wanna to check on that before you go to the campground. Maybe one of those storage bays I showed you, throw some jack pads in there, uh, which you'll wanna use if maybe you're outside, maybe you're boondocking. If the ground's a little mushy, throw some jack pads under there. But to retract your jacks, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your slides are in. Same situation, you're starting up your engine, your parking brake is on, you simply hit retract and all the jacks will automatically go up. So it's just as easy as that. While we're up here, let's talk about some of the great features on this dash. This is the new updated Ford F53 chassis. You have that new V8 engine. You have a nice digital gauge cluster. You have some steering wheel controls. So kind of walking through what you have here, over on this panel, you have your cruise control, works just like the one in your car. You have on, off, set, accelerate, cancel. You can decrease a little bit of speed. Over here on your menu, uh, right here in the center of your dash, you have two tripometers. You can check your fuel economy, how many miles to empty, you have some driver assist, uh, how many hours are on your engine, you have a voltmeter, a maintenance monitor for you, how much oil life you have left. Um, as we move up and over, your tripometers, your driver's assist, and here we go. We're now in the vehicle settings here, lighting, wipers, uh, auto lamp delay, daytime light, and again, this is an auto Headlights, so you can turn it to auto and then you can kind of control the, the, the sensitivity of when those lights will automatically come on. So a lot of features over here. Also, uh, you have a tow haul mode on your stock. So if you were towing or hauling, and again, we went through a lot of those features, but there is a really in-depth video on towing and hauling on our YouTube channel. We'll get a link to you here. Um, so you can tow haul mode here. Uh, buttons over here, which is uh, new for to control your radio. We'll go over some of the features and functions here. Uh, you got a couple holder over here, a place for your phone. Uh, right by the jacks, your auto headlights, you have a 12 volt plug, so you can plug in oh, whatever you need to do for a 12 volt standpoint. The controls for your remote heated mirrors are right over here. You adjust them just like you do in a car. Below is the heat for your mirrors to take the chill off, make sure they're not frosted. You also have an emergency start over here. And this is a great feature to have if for some reason, say your, your, your battery isn't starting your coach, what you do is you can hold this button in, you can turn the key and then what it will do is it will use the house batteries and draw that current to the chassis battery. That's why they're all tied together, keep them charged to start your coach. You can also reverse the procedure as well. Use the chassis battery for your house batteries. And again, we have a complete video on that. You have your fog light controls over here. As you move over here, a couple of vents. You have your hazard lights. You have your dash fans. And, and again, these dash fans aren't to cool you off. Point them at the window and it helps defrost your window. That's what you want to use your dash fans here. Uh, I turned my hazards on. Let me turn those off. Traction control on and off is right down here. Generator start, so you can start your generator right from here, which is pretty neat. You don't have to open the bay and open that panel. You can do it from here, but again, you're gonna prime it. You're gonna hold it down. You're gonna wait until the light glows, and then you can go ahead and you can start it. You have a cabin light switch right here, so you want a little light up here, or maybe you want one just on that side. What's nice is press push button. You can turn them on or off from here. You also have some map lights you can uh, turn on, which right here, so you can plug in your phone here and your nightshade, which is a really nice feature here. You can go ahead, well, won't I, I have the engine on. It's a nice safety feature. So you can go ahead and bring that down when your engine is not on. And there's your privacy for the night right there. And you can bring it up. It's also acts great when you're driving down the road, you can bring it down a few inches and it's really, it acts like a sun visor. So you can bring that down that way. It's a, really a great feature to have. HVAC controls work just like they do in your car. Moving on to our Xera. Lots of features to talk about on here. We're gonna hit up the home screen. Let me turn this back on. I'm gonna get myself a little AC. It's a little hot today. Um, so we have navigation here and there's a QR code that you scan to get signed up to start the navigation. The nice thing about this is it is RV specific navigation and that is really handy. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in the height, the width, the length of your vehicle and this will take you down roads that are safer motorhomes. You're not going to get down a, a road you haven't been down before and find out, oh my gosh, I can't get under this bridge. What am I going to do now? So RV specific navigation. Uh, back on the home screen, you have Bluetooth phone. You can pair your phone here. So if you want to take phone calls, 
you can do that. It's a Bluetooth, so you turn the Bluetooth on here, you turn the Bluetooth on on your phone, and you pair it just like you would in your car or any other Bluetooth device. Moving over, you have your radio. Uh, works just like a radio. You can uh, tune in all your local, your local stations there. Nice touch screen, right? Here is your camera. Nice thing about this is you can turn that camera on and you can see, oh my gosh, there's an outlaw sea behind me. It's an outlaw party, it's an outlaw caravan. So this is really nice so you can see the traffic behind you. Also, if you are towing, you can see that uh, you just keep an eye on your tow vehicle there. You also have Sirius XM satellite radio. So you sign up for a subscription there and it's Sirius XM satellite radio. So it's just about anything you could ask for uh, there. This is also the shortcut key for your camera. If you want, uh, as you're driving, you can go ahead and turn your camera on, switch back and forth between modes using that. Uh, back on our home screen, and we scroll through, and then you have some various settings that uh, you can go through and change your date and your time. You can change your wallpaper, you can set some sound effects, set your volume, set your equalizer. So a great system here, a lot of great features that you will find on it. Again, the owner's manual and the remote control are going to be in your black bag. You can also link your phone up. You take your cord and you plug a cord into your phone and into the USB outlet down here. And there's an Axera app that you download. And then these pair together and gives you a lot more features and functions. So make sure that you go ahead and you hook your phone up here. And again, I recommend you read the complete owner's manual. Uh, and I can't get into the navigation again because it's specific to the vehicle and you have to scan the QR code. And I'm not going to go ahead and start that for somebody else. We'll leave that to the lucky owner of this outlaw. So we're going to slide over. We're going to take a look at our flip out workstation. All right, so your passenger is sitting here enjoying passing the miles and you just stopped at a scenic route and you want to take and post some videos on your social media folder. This is a great option. This is your flip out dash workstation. These seats are adjustable so you can belly to the belly up to the bar if you want. Put your laptop here, your tablet here and you know, type away, upload. And yes, you can upload on the road because this motorhome is equipped with the WineGuard Connect 4G Hotspot 2.0 and Wi-Fi extender and really a lot of features involved there. Uh, it's, it, it's simple to use. You get your data plan. You can put a SIM card in up top on the roof. Okay, there's a little dish up there. It's also your uh, radio antenna and your TV antenna, but you set up your data plan and then you have your own safe, secure Wi-Fi signal. You can also tap into hotspots when you're out at, uh, if you're, if you're boondocking in, in Walmart or Cracker Barrel, which I guess is the latest hotspot to go. You can go ahead and tap into their Wi-Fi signals there and use that to create your own safe, secure connection as well. Uh, another use for this area that my wife loves, she calls it the Tracy station is when we are out, not in, not in an outlaw. I, I don't own an outlaw. I wish I did because I could fill it with toys. She uses this as a vanity. So ladies, if you need an extra place to get ready in the morning, you have a lot of great natural light. Well, uh, the kids or the, the husband or whomever happens to be taking up the shower, you can go ahead and use this as a nice little vanity. You also have ports to charge. You have a couple of 12 volts right over here and you have a 110 down below so you can plug your laptop in here. Uh, we do have to work our way back to put the slides out now that the jacks are down. So we can show you how these seats swivel. You can set up a table. We got a lot of interior features in here to show you. So I'm gonna work my way back to Rapid Camp and we'll put out the slides. So we are back at our Rapid Camp Plus control panel. The engine is still running. Our jacks are down. We wanna create all the living space that we can. Real easy to do. You can use the control panel or you can use your favorite mobile device. This is good on Android devices, you can use it on Apple devices. You download the Vega Touch Mira app, and then you go to the little gear, the settings version down here at the bottom. We'll give you a walkthrough of this here. You hit mobile app, you go ahead, it's gonna give you the ID to look for and the pin number, type it in, and then you are gonna be connected via Bluetooth to go ahead and use Rapid Camp Plus from your phone anywhere inside or outside your coach. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put out our slide rooms press the little slide button here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put out our driver's side first to open this up and give us quite a bit of room. So what you do is you hold down the extend button and away it goes. Now, when the slide is going out, you want to keep your finger on the button. You don't want to take it off. You want it to complete the entire cycle. Essentially, it is just two motors here on three rails that just go in and out, in and out. That's their entire job. They're not smart motors. They're simply motors. 
So you're gonna set this all the way out at the very end. You're gonna to wanna to make sure these motors sync up. So you're gonna listen for the noise. Put your listening ears on. Ready? Here it comes. All right, you hear that? That is the motor syncing up. And let's be honest, there is going to be a lot of activity in here and sometimes things happen, right? Your finger's gonna slip off the button or you're like, oh, I forgot to do this. I need to put it back in. So the slide is not going to complete an entire cycle. You need to sync those motors up. You can do that right from here, okay? So you're gonna use your fingers, the buttons, and your ears. You're gonna listen for six noises. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you hear that? You just synced your motors up right from here. So if they were out of whack, you just sync them up and they'll come back in. And if they are not coming in again, I showed you the brains down below. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, press on seven and then you will reset the motors that way. You'll reset the brain. But again, we have a complete troubleshooting guide on our YouTube channel. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to put out our bed slide, hit extend, and away it goes. The other nice thing about having a Rapid Camp Plus is if you are out at a campground and there are a lot of trees around, you can use your phone, stand outside, Put your slides out that way and make sure you're not getting too close to uh, the trees or the picnic table or the fire pit. Make sure uh, you're staying safe when you put out your slides. So once you have that out, you'll listen for it and away you go. All right, so let's take a look through our Rapid Camp Plus settings here. We are going to go back to the home screen and this is really a full functioning device. This has got a lot of great tech to it right here from the screen and again all of this is mirrored when you pair it to your smart device right from here you can turn your master lights on or off through the entire coach you can also take open and close the rear shade yeah there is a shade we'll show you going back from the bedroom to the garage that you can close over the sliding patio glass doors yeah, i know sliding patio pretty cool fresh gray black and propane tank you can check your levels here you can turn your water pump on or off from here again you're going to want your water pump on when you are not hooked up to city water so you can get water once you are hooked up to your campground you can go ahead and turn that off you do not need to have your water pump on you have your climate control your front ac your rear ac your house battery is at 13.5 volts now it's at 13.4 your chassis battery is at 14.5 volts and you can also charge your batteries right down here is your uh, 10 amp 10 amp solar controller we have 100 watts of solar up here on the roof you can go ahead and add to that another panel we have it all pre-wired we have strapping up there so if you want to add another panel you can but you can see you have charging coming in you can go ahead and scroll through 3.8 amps uh, 8.3 amp hours uh, 13 volts so you got uh, quite a bit happening here solar comes standard uh, below this as we get into your power menu is your inverter you can turn on or off from here again we talked about what an inverter and a converter does so you should be an expert on that by now but scrolling through the menus here uh, next one down is your power button this is how you would start your auto gen start okay so there are a lot of options here you can either use low volts and you can go ahead and you can set uh, you can set the parameters through here you can also turn on HVAC load yes the trigger will start if the generator there we go so your trigger is going to be your temperature that you set through your climate okay so in the coach if you have pets or uh, whatever it may be while you're gone you go ahead and you set your temperature so when it reaches that your generator will kick on so your air conditioner will fire on but you can also set your quiet time so let's say it's 11 o'clock you can't have your generator between 11 o'clock and 7 or maybe it's 10:45 and 7:45. whatever it is you can set the time that your generator will not run what volts do you want if you set your triggers to low volts this is the voltage you want it to start at uh, you can go through what voltage when it gets up to what 14 volts it will stop sure you can set that you can change that um, you have all sorts of gadgets here um, and how many times you want it to retry. So you can choose your volts, you can choose your HVAC load. We have a complete walkthrough of everything on our YouTube channel. Uh, lights here, we have lights for everything. Cargo, our step well, our front awning, our rear awning, living, dinette, kitchen hall, they're all labeled here. Uh, garage lights, docking lights. The ones with the arrows, you can dim. You just hold it down and you can go ahead and dim the lights to set the mood if you want. You can turn them all off. You can turn them all on. You can turn your front awning light off from here. 
All your lights are controlled here. This is your climate, real easy to use. You have your front AC, your rear AC. This number here is the temperature of the, the ambient temp, and this here is the temperature you want to set it at. So this works just like the thermostat at your house, okay? You can choose cool, you can choose furnished, you can choose auto, you can choose high, you can low, choose low, you can go ahead and you can set those for uh, whatever you need. Something to point out here that's very important when you're looking at your ambient temperature here. It's a, a cooler fall day here in Indiana, so we're right in the mid to upper 70s. But let's say you're going somewhere very warm where this is going to be 90. It's going to be 95. It's going to be 100. I know they've had some spells out west where it's been 110 degrees. Don't come in here thinking, well, it's 110. I'm going to go ahead and set my motor home for 70 degrees. Well, that's a 40 degrees difference. Your air conditioner is not going to be able to do that. You're going to end up freezing it up. Don't set your climate more than 10 to 15 degrees below your ambient temperature. So if it is 90 out, Go ahead, set it at 75 or 80 degrees. Let it slowly cool down. And then when it is stable at that temperature, you can go ahead and you can slowly and methodically lower that until you get it where you want. Otherwise, again, you will freeze up the coils. That is going to take oh, anywhere from six to seven hours to defrost those. So you, that's how long you're gonna go without air conditioning. So it is gonna be a very miserable hot time in here if you don't follow those, those directions. But there's a really easy way around that here. You know, we're getting into the time of year where your mornings are very crisp, they're very cool. That's the time you want to set your temperature for the day. So let's say you like your motor home at 70 degrees, okay? So in the morning, when it's not 10 to 15 degrees above this, you set it at 70. And then as it runs throughout the day, it will stay at that temperature. So that's the way to do it early in the morning. Go ahead and set your temperatures there so you don't freeze up your air conditioner and you have a, you're gonna have a lot better time. Again, you have your furnace that runs off of propane. You can set it to auto so it fluctuates to set the perfect temperature for you. We also have some fans. We have a fan in the kitchen, we have a fan in the bath, and we have a fan in the rear here. You can open and close the vents from here, uh, which is real nice. And they also, you can turn on, let's say we've got the, the, the kitchen vent on. We want to get some fresh air through here. There are cranks on the windows. You open them awning style. You get the breeze through here, and it will suck it right up through there. And again, these all have max air covers on them, uh, so you can open them in any weather, and it will really... Uh, get the air flowing for you to get to a nice breeze, some circulation through and to take out the heat. Uh, while we're talking heat and fans and vents, going back to this real quick, uh, just a quick tip, kind of a train of thought deal I want to pass on to you. This also is equipped with sunshades and blinds. So you can pull the sunshades down to take a lot of that glare out to help keep it cooler. But if you're going to go away for a while, you got a lot of bright sunshine coming in through either side, go ahead and pull your blinds for the day. That'll keep a lot of that... Uh, sunshine out. It's going to keep it a little cooler here and help your ACs run a lot more efficient. As we move to our slides and awnings, we have a lot happening here. You can control your bed slide from here, your rear awning, your front awning, your driver's side slide, your front bunk. We're going to show you how to use your front drop down overhead bunk from here as well. And you can control your rear awning from here. You also have a settings page where you can go through mobile app. That's where you connect to the mobile app. You can check your network diagnostics. You can see if there's a fault anywhere. You can go through different inputs. Everything is working just fine today, as it will for you. You can change your temperature units. It tells you what floor plan you're in. You can change the brightness of your screen. You can auto dim it. If you want to wipe the fingerprints off, you hit cleaning mode. Then for 15 seconds, the screen goes blank and you can wipe it clean. And this is where you set your time as well for the time zone you're in. You can also choose 24 hour time. So that is how you use your multiplex wiring system, which we are going to use when we turn around and up front and show you how to lower that overhead bunk. This is the solar controller for the 100 watt solar panel on your roof. This is gonna help keep your batteries charged. This is a great way to check on your batteries. You can see how many volts are in the battery and if they are charging or not. Now that your slides are out, your living area is open, we're going to show you how to swivel the captain's chair, set up the tables, show you all the seating options, the kitchen, we're going to give you a complete tour. So we're up front, a lot to talk about up here. First, we're going to start with your overhead bunk. We showed you on the Rapid Camp Plus, you can control that from there. You can use your phone, you can also use you can also use the wall switches here, which actually pop off. Yes, you can take those with you, but if you have it on your phone, you don't really need to do that. Uh, but there are batteries inside, and on the main screen, it'll show you if those batteries are low. So before you lower this drop-down bunk, there are pins on each side. You're going to go ahead, and you're going to pull each of these pins out, okay? 
And you're going to want to make sure that your chairs are lean back because you don't want to damage your chairs. All right. Just like that. You come over here. You have a seat and a comfortable dinette, which makes into a bed as well. And we'll show you how to do that. And then you hit bunk down. Hold the button down. And down she comes. And see, this is why you have to push these chairs back. Otherwise, you'd be squishing the top of those. So the ladder, which we showed you in the storage bay, you can grab that. You can set this right here and climb right up. And you have a nice place to spend the night. You have netting up there. And then in the morning, you go ahead and bunk up. And just like that. You know, one thing uh, we hear a lot of people do is they take in they put, if they're going out on a trip, they go ahead and they put uh, you know, some valuables up there and they kind of use it as a safe. And then once, it, once the bed is all the way up, you just reverse the procedure. You put your pins in. Now let's talk about these drivers and passenger seats here. Go ahead and put them up just a little bit. All right, so over on the side, you're going to have a handle that will swivel your chair. You can swivel it this way. You're gonna sit over here, and there's going to be a little handle on the side. You press that. Now your chairs are swiveled. You're gonna go into the back. You're gonna grab, and it's stored in a closet. <clears throat> your table, I moved it up here for convenience. Pop that into place, you pop that into place. Now you have a nice little table, a nice little seating area, do a little, little work, have some coffee in the morning, but here you go. You also have the booth die and net, all right? So this is a great place for uh, a number of reasons. It's versatile, okay? You love a versatile place that is gonna do a lot for you. This seats four, it's very comfortable. You, got, you have storage underneath, here, I'll open this one for you. You have some storage underneath so you can keep maybe some board games in there, uh, whatever you need, and you spend the day here. You're having a good time. You're watching TV. I'll show you how to work the TV in just a few minutes here. But at night, you want a place to sleep. Well, you move your pillows if this is where you keep them. And then you move your cushions. Just like this. Move your back cushion. You can set it on the table if you want. And you can see there are seat belts here, so it is safe to ride. All right, get your cushion out of the way. You pull the handle, push your table down. You put your cushion back in place. And look at that, your dream dinette is now a dreamy place to sleep. Well, in the morning, I guess it's really easy. You just push your cushions right back into place and you lift your table up and you have a bed here. So let's swing over and show you how to work the couch. So over at the couch, you have seating areas here. You have some seat belts for the trip. This also makes into a bed. This is a nice little quick jackknife sofa. Just lift and push. You can push your seat belts down so they're not in the way. And here you go. You have another nice little bed to sleep for the night. Now we want to talk about a little entertainment because when you're not sleeping here, maybe you're sitting here and you're, you're having some popcorn, you have a drink on the shelf, and you want to watch TV. You can do a lot more than watch just plain old regular TV from the campground here. Let's take a look in the cabinet above and I'll show you what we got. So talking entertainment in this cabinet, and it will vary if you are in the KB or the MB outlaw, we have a Blu-ray player that plays uh, Blu-ray discs that is wired into the TV. We also have an HDMI distribution box. Okay, so if you have a, a Roku or whatever and you want to plug that in and stream that, you can. And again, you have the WineGuard Connect uh, hotspot that you've created, so you can go ahead and stream that way. Uh, if you have a gaming console, you can hook it up here as well. Also, right up here, this is an important little feature to talk about, this switch. Okay, you can see there's a green light, green light on right now. This means this is connected to the WineGuard TV antenna. So when it is in this mode, that means it is using the antenna on top and you can pull in your local station. So wherever you are set up, you'll grab the remote and you'll go ahead and you'll get to the menu and you'll program your local stations. If you're hooked to the cable that we showed you how to do outside and you're hooked to the campground cable, you go ahead and press that button and turn that light off. 
Okay, now you are ready to go ahead and program your television for all of the cable channels. So again, TV, local over the air, green, cable, light off. It's just that easy and you have all the entertainment you need. As we move on through, let's go ahead and talk about the kitchen. The Outlaw Kitchen is a great place to cook all your favorite on the road meals. You have solid surface countertops, you have sink covers and a place to store them. So if you need a little more room for let's say a cookbook or maybe a coffee pot or a blender, you put those in place. You can use those as a cutting board. We have uh, a garbage can down below, lots of storage options. We haven't talked about that yet. The cabinets in here, look at that. You have lots of counter space on both sides, a lot of drawers, cabinets. This is the plug for your microwave. That's a 110. That is a residential microwave. You also have a residential refrigerator. You have your sink, double bowl sink. You have a pull down sprayer here, a couple of modes. You can use a, it shows you here, you can use the streamer, you can use the shower mode. Uh, your windows, we talked about opening those. You simply turn the knob to open the windows. And again, they open awning style. So just like that so you can get the breeze through and then if it's raining you don't have to worry about uh, water getting into your windows you lock those up you also have pull down shades that we talked about for your uh, to keep your coach nice and cool moving over to our cooktop this is a great setup here because you have the best of both worlds you have an electric induction cooktop and remember you need special pans for this you can't throw every pan on there uh, if it sticks to a magnet you can go ahead and use your induction cooktop all the controls are here we also have two burners that light just like it is at home. So if your propane is on, click, light, use. Now we're cooking with gas, literally. Now we're cooking with gas. Our convection microwave up top, we do not have a stove. Down here instead we give you a lot of storage. Up top, convection microwave. This works like your oven. Yeah, you have your regular microwave settings, your popcorn, your potato. If you want to heat up some coffee or reheat. But your convection mode works just like an oven. You put in the temperature at 325. I want to bake at 350. You can do cookies in here, a, a roast, a full-on turkey dinner. In fact, on our YouTube channel, look up Mobile Meals. We have a number of great recipes to show you uh, how to use the cooking appliances in your motor home. Maybe you'll get some ideas, maybe make some new favorites. But this is a kitchen setup. Works just like it does at home. Another control panel right here. You have a residential refrigerator in your motor home as well. And again, we talked about uh, if you are off the grid and you are running off your inverter or your generator, we talked about that. But this is a residential refrigerator, which is very nice. You have the separate uh, freezer and uh, it's actually cold right now. It's hot out there. This is nice. Nice and cool in there. Your temperature up there. You have cold, colder, coldest. So you can set your temperature there. As we walk in to show you all the features of the bathroom, which you'll probably need after cooking up a great meal. So here we are in the Outlaw bathroom. A lot of great features to talk about. You're gonna have a lot of room to move. You have very large medicine cabinets each side. You have your tankless hot water right here, which is easy to use. You turn it on and then you can go ahead and you can set the temperature to whatever you want. If you like your water hot, you like your water a little cooler, you control that right here. You have a, a GFCI protected outlet, which we're gonna talk about uh, uh, quickly here and then we'll get into it when we talk about your fuse box. But uh, in the event that there is an outlet somewhere throughout the coach that isn't working, I would check your GFCI. Just like in the one at home, you can test, you can reset. Nine times out of 10, you come in here and do that and all your outlets will be working. A lot of counter space here. You have a place for towels down below. You can access your, uh, your P-trap, towel racks. You have a vent above. You have your sink. You have a great shower. Uh, it is a sliding glass door. And you're gonna wanna make sure that the handle is locked before you're heading down the road to keep it from moving around and breaking. Um, so lots of room in here too because of the way the Outlaw is designed with the skylight on top. Boy, uh, it is just a ton of room in that shower. But I'm gonna stand up, we're gonna talk about the toilet because there is actually a certain way that you need to use the toilet in your motorhome. So your Outlaw is equipped with a porcelain toilet. Okay, so a couple of things that you do need to know. First of all, make sure you're using marine or RV grade toilet paper so it does dissolve quickly. You do not wanna use your favorite store-bought brand because you will get yourself into a literal jam that is not gonna be a good time on your camping trip. So make sure that you are using the proper toilet paper. When it comes to using the old commode here, okay, what you're gonna to wanna to do, you have a foot flush here. Before you do your business, kinda of push it halfway down. Get some water in the bowl, 
get some water in the bowl. Do what you got to do and then hold it down. The water will come down and you can go ahead and flush that way. But again, make sure you're holding it down just a little bit, get some water in there, then go ahead and flush. And it's just as simple as that to use your outlaw toilet. So here in the bedroom of the outlaw, you're going to have a queen bed here. In the KB, you have a king bed that is on a tilt of view mechanism. So you just press the button and you can go ahead and tilt it into the perfect position to help read, maybe take uh, the edge off if you're snoring. The thing that is important to know with the tilt of view bed is make sure that you have it in the up position before you put the slide wall in with the multiplex wiring system. Now it does give you a reminder. It says, make sure this is up. Are you sure? Double check. You go ahead and you confirm. Uh, but great bedroom layouts. You have a lot of storage in here. You have USB ports down here for a phone or a tablet. You also have a overhead reading lights. I wanted to show you another neat storage option on this outlaw floor plan right under the mattress here. Lift up the mattress, lift up your handle, gas hinges here, and you have a nice little location for blankets, pillows, whatever you need. So some hidden under that bed storage in this outlaw and right below that, your fuse box. What we have here is your converter. This is essentially your central processing unit. You're gonna find this in your bedroom typically, but in depending on your floor plan, it may be located somewhere differently. We wanna make sure that it is accessible for you no matter where you are and if your slides are in or out. Simply put, this is your fuse box. It houses your circuit breakers, houses all your fuses. And this is where the converter takes power from your generator, it takes power from your shore power, runs it right through here. It's gonna send 110 volts to the appliances that need 110 volts, like your microwave and your TV. It's also gonna send 12 volts to the appliances like your lights that use 12 volts. It's also gonna charge our batteries. But let's say something isn't working. Maybe it's your lights, maybe it's your fridge, your microwave, your AC, whatever it may be. Come back here, check to make sure that the fuses are engaged, make sure a breaker isn't tripped. All you do is you just press to open. Opens just like this. And it is laid out kind of like in your home and your car. It's kind of a mix of both. You have your 12 volt blade style fuses here like you'd find in an automotive application. And you have your circuit breakers here like you would find in your home, right? And we have a chart here that's gonna tell us what each of our 12 volt loads is and what each of our 110 volt loads is. And it's all labeled here. You know, you can see you have your TV, your microwave, your front end, see your main breakers, your rear AC, your converter, your cooktop, your washer, it is all here. All right, so one thing I want you to take note of is at least on this one, your GFCI uh, is over here and this is something to keep an eye on. So let's say that one of your outlets isn't working and you're not quite sure. Well, first I would go find your GFCI outlets usually in the bathroom and reset that. That should usually take care of the problem. If not, come back here and then go ahead and flip your GFCI outlet. All right, now the 12 volt fuses are located here. And if you do need to replace them, make sure they're securely installed first. One thing that is really important to do is use the correct amperage. Don't use a higher or a lower amperage than what you see listed here. So this is a look at your fuse box and your converter, and it easily closes and is easily accessible. So take note of that and you should have no problems. A lot of closet space in here. Remember that table and leg that I got up front? This is where it stores. A lot of hanging space. Your closet has its own light you can turn on or off, but the table stores in here, you have a, a, a closet rod, you have a nice amount of drawers down here. TV right over here, you can go ahead and watch TV. You also have a little bit of storage behind your TV. You have a dresser top, you have 110, you have USB ports, a lot of nice drawers. So you're gonna find a lot of great storage options in here. Remember the shade we talked about on the multiplex? This is it. You can go ahead and put the shade up or down from the multiplex wiring system where you can go ahead and you can use the panel right here on your door. Give yourself some privacy, but it's great when you open it and walk through and spend time in the garage, which we are about to do. So come on. Yes, it's a little dark in the garage, but we haven't opened up the patio doors yet. We showed you the outside of them. Inside, this is great. They lock, you pull up the switch, you grab the handles, you slide them open. You also have little tabs here that work just like your storm windows at home, where you pull those down and you can open the screens. They lock into place here. You can go ahead and take them off if you want. We're gonna go ahead and open these up. And you just take and you pull the cord, push the door open, and now you have patio time. But let's take a look at all the other features in this garage. Showing off the garage here, this is the patio door. You can close the glass if you want and lock it. You can pull your screen if you want just a nice fresh breeze coming through. You also have the step to the outside door that latches up here. 
undo the latch and then you have more surface area to walk around in back here. You'll notice all of the storage nets up above for, for tool bags or whatever you need and they're real easy to get when you are, are climbed up here to the, the bunk which will show you how to lo lower. You have a TV back here. You have a toolbox where you can store tools and cleaners and whatever else you need. Here is the ladder for the bunk. Over here, your Bluetooth coach radio system. This is app enabled. You can go ahead and you can pair your phone right up to the app and you can stream your favorite device. Uh, this is the step for uh, over here. Your inside step works just like the one up front. This is a neat little feature. This is 12 volt jump station. So let's say uh, your toy is just not starting. The battery, a little bit dead. Right there, you can go ahead and jump or charge that way. You have uh, another remote panel here you can turn on your docking lights your garage ceiling lights there's a patio over the uh, awning over the patio you can go ahead and extend or retract there you have lighting uh, lighting up above you even have your own air conditioning unit back here so it's like its own little getaway and uh, here are the vents remember we showed you outside you can go ahead and open and close those there a lot of great options out here including sleeping and sitting and entertaining so we're going to take and show you how to lower the bed and set up the couches the first thing you need to do though they're going to be four pins okay they work just like the ones on the patio you're going to go ahead and you're going to pull those out one on each side here you go there's one reach out pull two and there are two on the other side we're going to pull out and then we're going to go ahead and drop the bunk all right, so we have a lot of options over here when it comes to sleeping and entertaining. You have some light switches over here that control lights up in your cabin. You also have the switch for your bed. So we've pulled the pins out. You're going to want to bring this down. Uh, these you'll have hooked up somewhere else. Uh, this is that big, tough mud flap you can put on the back of your outlaw. That'll hook up and it'll be super cool. You also have uh, a rug that you can go ahead and yeah, you can use it on the patio, you can use it in here, you can take it outside and have some nice outdoor seating. Uh, tie downs for your toys down here uh, as well, so a lot of great features in the garage. You move everything out and then you pull the pins and down come the bunks. A couple of different options here uh, and it all depends on how you want to use it. If you want to use it just as a bed, if you want to use it as a couch, right now we're bringing down the bed. So we've pulled all four pins and we are bringing down the bed. All right, so now that your bed is down, you grab the ladder, put it in place, and you go ahead and climb up. There's also another sleeping space here. But let's say you want to sit out here. Well, you don't have the headroom to do that, right? Well, you do when you go ahead and you put the bed back up and you make these into couches. So this will flip over, okay, just like that. And there are little legs when you're in the bed position, you'll go ahead and you'll fold those down to give you a little more stability. But you fold those up and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the bed back up. All right, so you have the bed up and you want a seating area. You have everything raised, you have all four pins put back in, and you hit the down button. The bed will stay up, but your couch will come down. We'll show you how to flip this over in just a second here as it is still in the bed position. A lot of options back here for you. You still have a lot of headroom to move around, a lot of space to entertain. Again, if you want to set some chairs up on the patio, you go ahead and you throw the awning out using your multiplex wiring system and you just spend the day out here. A lot of people will take and they will back their outlaw right up, at least as close as they can to the lake. They'll fish from the deck. Just a lot of great features here. It's really a unique vehicle. As the bed comes down here, we'll talk about real quick troubleshooting. If you do have any problems and you need to override the system, we do have a video on how to uh, climb up and troubleshoot. So you're gonna wanna check that out on our YouTube channel and our customer service videos. A lot of great help out there for you to kind of help you walk through the procedure. Now that the bed is down, all you have to do is you flip the cushions into a seating area just like that you can go ahead and you can have a seat and what you can do back here if this is your first trip each Thor motor coach comes with a big giant black bag it has all your manuals in it it has all your warranty guides in it you're going to want to go through that each individual appliance in here is going to have its own warranty card so take some time fill those warranty cards out and send them in you also have a 12-year uh, structural, six-year lamination, and one-year limited warranty 
on the outlaw okay there is going to be a warranty guide in the black bag you're going to want to read that through and see what you need to do to make sure you keep up with the uh, warranty on there there are maintenance items you have to do this is like anything else just like your car you do maintenance on your car you need to do maintenance on your motor home and what you also can do to keep up with all the specs and maybe you want to maybe you want a chart or you want a diagram of your specific motorhome on our webpage, ThorMotorCoach.com, over on the Owner's Resources tab, create an account, sign up, you put your VIN number in, and your specific motorhome is then locked in and anything you want, schematics, you have access to all that, customer service videos, quick start guides, everything you need to help you enjoy your motorhome more can be found at ThorMotorCoach.com. So that is it. That is how you use your outlaw. I hope you found this useful, and I hope you make the most of your trip wherever it is you're headed.